What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Uh, sorry I missed you guys last week, but I was fishing. I had a chance to go fishing, so I took it. So I uh, hope you're not too terribly personally offended by that. Um, I would hope that if you got a chance to go deep sea fishing, uh, you would go rather than watching uh, this. You could always watch it later. I mean, if you can go deep sea fishing right now, go ahead, man. I won't feel bad. Just tune in later. Um, we get so many, many questions about in-ear monitors. Violinists and in-ear monitors, just it seems to be a thing. And, you know, I totally get it. I love wearing in-ear monitors. It has definitely protected my hearing throughout the years. Um, I can tell you that my playing has improved dramatically since I started wearing in-ear monitors. You can just, you can hear yourself so, so well with in-ear monitors, sometimes a little too well. Hear yourself, you're like, gosh, uh, I didn't know I was doing that. Um, so yeah, in-ear monitors make a huge difference, both from a hearing protection standpoint, from uh, being able to hear yourself standpoint, and the better you can hear yourself, the better you can play. Um, in-ear monitors are pretty unforgiving. You gotta think about the fact that, that that element that you're listening to is about that far from your eardrum, and there's just nowhere to hide. Um, in fact, I used to go so far as I would record my in-ear monitor mix for myself. And of course, what's in your in-ear monitor mix, or at least for me, my vocal and my violin, and then like everybody else, right? So I'm way out front in my in-ear monitor mix, and there's no reverb or anything in that mix. It's just dry and tracky, and you are hung out to dry, for real. Um, so my rationale on that was if that I if I could get my in-ear monitor mix to sound like okay, it probably sounded amazing out front. So you know if I can get my in-ears to sound like I'm not embarrassed for somebody to hear that recording, then it sounded really really good out front. So in-ears are fantastic, man. I I love using in-ears. The problem with in-ears is they're really expensive. Like a, a set that's worth a flip is really expensive. The ones that, that we toured with, with my band, uh, were in the 1000 to $1,500 per person uh, price range. You're looking at 1000 to $1,500 per person, and that's just the transmitter and the receiver. That's not the earbuds. The earbuds are about another $1,000. Uh, anywhere between, well, really between $300 and $1,000, depending on how good you want them to be. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, quality costs money, how good you want to sound. So um, I was really excited to see um, at NAM show last year, it's, you know, the thing is like wireless transmitters with your instrument signal on them have been relatively inexpensive. The, the, uh, the Line 6G10, under 200 bucks. Uh, Boss has the WL20, I think, around 200 bucks. They're pretty inexpensive. Why on earth are the in-ears so expensive? You know, it's just it's just a wireless coming the other way, right? So I was really excited to see at NAM this product right here. Let's go look. Uh, I gotta push the right button. Let's push the right button, guys. Hoo ah, right here. This in-ear monitor set right here, we got the picture on the screen and I'm holding one right there. These um, debuted at NAMM this last year and I was really excited to see because most of the time when you see in-ear monitors at this price, they kind of sound like they're at that price and not a thousand dollars more. Um, these are so simple though. This is the transmitter. That's it. Like this thing is, and it doesn't weigh anything. You can see, look, look how easy I can pick it up. Um, it's very, very light. I was really surprised by how light it was. And it just plugs right into your XLR out of your front of house board. It sticks in there. And this is a rechargeable battery in here. Here's the power button right here. Push the power button, hold it in. The light comes on. Hoo ah, look at that. And then same deal here. This is rechargeable battery. Plug it in, turn it on. Look at there, the light's on. Tells me we're synced up. Looky there, how easy that is. Um, 
Where's the charger? I had the charger somewhere. Here's the charger. This little deal right here plugs into the wall. Little USB deal there. Two uh, little phone chargers. This thing's charge up. Takes a couple hours to charge up, and uh, and then you're good for you know a long time. So just for grins, you know, like how am I gonna demonstrate to you what these sound like? Um, it's kind of tricky. Oh, that's not what I wanted you to see yet. How silly of me. Um, so how am I gonna demonstrate these? I don't know. Uh, so here's what I thought. This is me thinking after uh, uh, after I had some some cookout and a milkshake. Um, that's when I do my best thinking after a milkshake. Is uh, I'm gonna plug this into the back of a Loudbox Artist to the uh, the DI out. Hold that thought. Here I go. All right, plugging it in. It is now plugged into the back of that Loudbox Artist. I'm gonna take this and look at here. I'm talking to you guys through a um, through a microphone that's in the room, and I'm plugged into my um, interface here. So what I'm going to do, this isn't really a perfect solution, but it's the only one I could come up with after a milkshake. So I'm going to plug this little cable into here, and then I'm going to plug the other end of that into the interface. How about that? Not really an ideal solution, but we're going to try it anyway. And then I'm going to turn the microphone down so that you, you know, I'm going to leave the microphone up. How's that? Um, and I'm going to grab this new Zeta that just came in because OMG. Um, how do you like that? It's a Makassar Ebony. <laughs> My dumb butt, I thought it was Madagascar Ebony. So I was like, ooh, Madagascar Ebony. That's that's really uh, that's really special. It's not Madagascar. It's 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 Massacre or Makassar or whatever. Makassar Ebony. There it is. Um, it's really beautiful. Uh, is it is 2.4. It is 2.4 gigahertz. So that is one potential drawback. Um, but let's uh, let's see what's going on here. Now let's turn up the input on that. You guys should be. Most of what you're hearing should be just violin just coming through. Coming through the uh, coming through the airwaves to you. hearing that right um, I can't really I don't have monitors <laughs> ironically um, I can only hear what's happening in the room I can hear I've got the amp turned down pretty low here but I can see that I'm lighting up and I can see my input meters you can hear that that octave was not even close <laughs> I uh, have not tried that yet. Um, I have not, uh, for obvious reasons, have not had a chance to take this out on the road and try it with a band. Um, makes me very sad. Um, I did get to sample it at NAMM and they ran a whole very, very wide frequency band through the whole thing and um, and people were digging it. Hey, Sean is here. Hey, what's up guys? Hey. Over yeah, up. come on in and say hi. I love your dress. It's awesome. She's. I'm color coordinated she's today. She's color Actually, coordinated. Math coordinated today. Yeah. I was um I I with these came in. Have you started talking about these yet? I did. We're we're talking about them right now, and so okay. are you. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say that um, I haven't been in here in a couple of days, and when when I came in, I was like, Ooh, what is this? What's going on Let's here? Let's do this. Oh yeah, look at that. Yes, and so. I hadn't had a chance to like read up on it, but I figured that it would work out for me. 
Um, and it looks like it's a pretty easy situation because you just plug it into the back of your, of your amp. You have an XLR out, boop, and then this goes, uh, is this like a, um, this is like a, okay, so here's what we would have to figure out. Hold this for me, please. This one, yes. So I don't have pockets today, so ladies, you'll appreciate like doing, you have to figure something out like with your wardrobe or something. Maybe this would go easily on the back, probably, but. You could clip it, you could attach it to your cello. I could attach this to my cello? Why not? Where? Just on the strings? Just duct tape it right around the back. Oh, I could go by, get, get over here, <laughs> get back there. See, this is, no duct tape. Gaff tape. Gaff tape. There you go. That's that's <laughs> professional. Good to see y'all. Um, so that is a thing for women. It's a, it's a thing that they don't always have an outfit with a uh, with a belt, and you can tell that it's men that design these things because what do we do? We put a belt clip on the back of this, and then you get some dumb dude be like, "We'll just stick it in your pocket," and then you're gonna get slammed. <laughs> Women's clothing doesn't have pockets. Um, so, uh, and that's a point of contention, actually. But the, um, yeah, so what they'll do in theater, uh, generally they'll put an elastic band or something around um, around their midsection. What's that? Yeah, I guess the top of your belly um, underneath your, your chest. Stop it. <laughs> what? I'm just using body parts. And uh, so, yeah, there, it's pretty common in theater for them to put an elastic band around the top of your belly and they can put all your wireless stuff on there. It's awful and it sucks. We, we don't have a better solution. Um, I, we've had this, we should think about this. We should, yeah. implantable. No. Bill Gates could. No, no, no. implants. <laughs> I'm thinking, ladies, I'm thinking that like on, a, on an outfit like this, I probably would just like put it, you know, it, it, it may be like inside. The only problem is that you can't. It, can't get to your is, volume now. Yeah, you yeah. can't get to the volume. So there would have to be but whoever Just clips it on there can can deal with your volume for you. Or if you're playing or singing and it's not right, you just call one of your people. Wardrobe, come turn me down! <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful Antonia, thing. I need you! <laughs> you got people, you, she travels with an entourage, you should see. <laughs> Shauna comes rolling up with like 30 people all behind her, not. carrying like flavored water and all these. <laughs> I'm going to get on here and comment. <laughs> oh, here come the comments. Oh, yeah, two guys who follow her with fans, though. <laughs> That's right. Oh, oh, my gosh, you guys stop. Peeling grapes. Oh, it's all God. part of the uh, <laughs> It's part of the whole thing. Um, when you hire Shauna, it's a full service <laughs> thing. So, yeah, I, honestly, we're pretty impressed with this little item, especially for the price, $349. My goodness, it's like like literally a thousand dollars less than what I'm touring with. Um, I am interested to get this out on the road and try it. Um, I mean, I don't expect that it's going to compete with a sure PSM 1000 system. It, I would be really angry if it did, honestly. Um, but if you are budget limited and especially during, you know, the fact that our jobs are illegal for the most part right now, um, probably everybody who's touring is budget limited right now. Um, this is a good way to get into um, the IEM market, the in-ear monitor market, and it's you know if a thousand bucks just isn't going to happen, you're not. Listen, I've, my reality is I can't drop a thousand dollars on a wireless in-ear monitor right now. Maybe you could drop three forty-nine, and and if it gets you ninety percent of the way there, or eighty percent of the way there, that ain't bad. Um, so let's talk about the two pieces of an in-ear monitor system. We always get that question. Oh, I need in-ear monitors. Well, what people don't understand there's actually two pieces of that. The first piece is a transmitter and receiver, and that's what this is. This is just getting the signal from the board to your belt, or whatever it is that Sean is gonna clamp this thing onto. Um, the next piece is what goes from the receiver to your head, okay? Because this thing, it's got a little eighth inch jack on it. You can see this little eighth inch jack right there. And you put your you put your earbuds into there, and then they go, usually if you're smart, they go inside your shirt and then back around over your, your ears. Um, 
then so the deal with that is you got to have earbuds. Now I know people that go to Walgreens and get the little five dollar and ninety nine cent deals, and you know what they sound like? They sound like they cost five dollars and ninety nine cents. Um, I guess it's maybe better than nothing. Um, I actually appreciate my hearing more than that. Um, you can get what they call universal fit earbuds, and you can get some pretty decent ones for around 100 to 150 dollars. Um, and they will have like different size tips that you can put in your ears. It's basically like an earplug that's got a hole in the middle that the speakers go through the hole. Um, and there's different because uh, everybody's ears are a different shape. Um, if you've ever been in a fight with Mike Tyson, your ears are definitely in a different shape. Um, but everybody's ear canal is a different size, different shape. So generally these universal fit buds will have, they'll come in different sizes. And some will be like the squishy foam ones that you have to squish down and stick in your ear before they expand out. Some are like the little, uh, the little rubber plugs. It looks like a toilet plunger, only much, much smaller. Um, so that's fine. Those are the universal fit ones that go into your ears. Uh, th they're okay. Um, I have found... For me, the custom fit ones are a lot better where they actually take a, and you go to an audiologist and they do a, an impression of your ear. They put a, uh, this is really uncomfortable, but they put a little piece of foam on a string and they push it all the way in till it's touching your eardrum and that sucks. But they do that and then they put this goop in your ear and they let it wait about three or four minutes till it sort of turns into rubber and then they pull it out and you know both ears and they send that off and then the manufacturer takes that mold and makes the uh, makes your custom molded uh, in-ear monitors I should have brought mine with me but I didn't um, so there are a bunch of companies that do that I use all clear audio universal audio is great 1964 ears are great I think Akiva just got some from somebody there there's a bunch of really good companies out there that make them sort of the frustrating the frustrating part about it is it's really hard to try out a set of custom molded in-ears to see if you like them because the only way to get them is to have them custom molded. So it's it's a little frustrating that you can't try them out until you get them. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. So um, yeah, there, there are wireless pouches. But that's a good point, Stephen. Um, it's the question is like, where do you put it? <laughs> it's I could hang it around my neck, I guess, but... If you're wearing something like Shauna, that doesn't help you any. Um, yeah, it's frustrating. There are people that will attach it to their instrument. Um, the problem is, what if you want to set your instrument down? If you're Shauna and you play more than one instrument, you want to set your cello down and play your guitar, oh crap, my in-ears are now gaff taped to the back of my cello. That's no good. So, yeah, it, it can be a little frustrating. And Akiva's right. The, the cables of the earbuds are easy to break. The earbuds themselves are also really easy to break. Um, my sound guy was touring with like a $2,000 set of in-ears and he dropped one of them and it shattered and he had a really bad night. Um, yeah, West Tones, another good one. Uh, you can get, yeah, you can get the West Tones in a universal fit, uh, custom fit obviously is going to be better, um, but you know, they cost money. So the features you're looking for in earbuds are comfort. You're going to be wearing these things for several hours. Um, and so, yeah, if they're not comfortable, you're not going to like that. Uh, the rejection is how much sound they block out. Um, my custom molds are 26 dB of rejection. So if it's 100 dB in the room, I put those in. It's now 74 dB in my ears, and that is super comfortable, which means then I just have to turn up just enough to get over what's bleeding through um, and man, it sounds fantastic. What you're, what you're buying when you buy a thousand dollar set of in-ears is you're paying for those bottom two things. You're paying for clarity and you're paying for the number of drivers. Um, and what, so the clarity is how, how much distort, it, clarity is the opposite of distortion. So it's how little distortion is in that signal. And when you're dealing with cheap speakers, there's going to be more harmonic distortion and you're going to have to get it louder in order to be able to hear it well. So the nice thing that I've found with my really expensive in-ears, I can actually turn them down quite low and still be able to hear 
everything. I can hear people breathing in their mics around the stage. I mean, the, the level, I can, I can hear the bow hair scraping across the string. I mean, I can hear everything on stage. And maybe that's not a good thing, I don't know. But um, that's, the clarity is what you're paying for. And one of the things that delivers that clarity is the number of drivers. Um, I'm working with triple drivers, but very high-end triple drivers. I've seen people with as many as like 11 or 13 drivers inside their, their ears. That's generally bass players and drummers will want a super, super high level of clarity in every single frequency range. Um, they, that is one thing, Akiva, that's a good point. They do make you feel really cut off. I've been using them for almost 20 years, so I keep forgetting about that, that, that it's, a, uh, it's a new experience. When you first put your in-ears in for the first time, there's act, you actually feel lonely. It's like, oh my goodness, there's only one person in the universe hearing, hearing what I'm hearing right now, and that's me. Nobody else in the room that I'm with in this room is having the same experience as me because they're not hearing what I'm hearing. And you would be surprised how lonely that can make it. It's like a weird feeling of loneliness and you wouldn't expect to feel lonely in a room full of people, but you do. Um, you can feel, it can feel very dry, very tracky, very separated. And these are all good things if you're trying to hear what you're doing to help yourself put on a show. Uh, you do lose a lot of the energy that you're getting back from the crowd. And like Akiva says, you can, a lot of places uh, will set up shotgun mics on the front of the stage to capture that ambience from the crowd. I don't like those. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want those mics. Um, if I have access to them, I will turn them off, especially in a bar situation. Uh, the people in a bar, they're singing along with you really loud. And you know why you're getting paid to sing and they're not? they're not good singers so the problem with that is they're singing out of time and out of tune most of them uh, I, I don't want to hear that <laughs> I'm happy to hear the people with me that are playing in time and in tune and I'm happy to look out a crowd across a crowd of a thousand people and I can see them singing I cannot hear them singing and that makes me very happy um, so yeah, ambience mics are, they do allow you to, to get some of that energy and the feedback from the crowd. Uh, what we would tell the guys in our band that were, that were doing this for the first time, listen, you're the professional, you supply the energy. Just, just get, get the feedback visually. You don't have to, you don't have to hear them. You can, I mean, you can hear them a little bit. These things aren't magic. It's not a hard cut off. They're cutting off 20 to 25 decibels of sound. If that crowd's screaming back at you at 100, 105 dB, you can still hear them. Um, it's just, it's a lot better when you don't have to receive that full feedback. Like Akiva says here, uh, playing with one ear in and one ear out is a horrible idea. It's really dangerous. Um, a lot of people like to do it because they feel like they're getting the best of both worlds. Like I can hear the crowd out of one ear and I can hear myself out of the other ear. There's a thing called binaural summation, and it's B-I-N, by, oral, A-U-R-A-L, binaural summation, um, and it's a thing. So if, if I'm getting, if what I'm hearing in one ear from the crowd is at 100 decibels, my brain wants my other ear to also be at 100 decibels. So my tendency is gonna be to crank that pack up until it is as loud as the crowd is that's really bad. You don't want 100 decibels piping a half, an, a half an inch or an eighth of an inch from your eardrum. You're gonna lose the hearing in that ear. It's really dangerous. So you, got, you, gotta, you gotta force yourself, if you are gonna do the one ear in, one ear out thing, not a good idea. If you're gonna do that, you have to discipline yourself to keep that pack turned down lower than you want it. Um, yeah, Shauna's got uh, ultimate ears. Yeah, those are fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, you do worry about losing them, um, but you know you worry about losing your cello too. So, <laughs> um, see, so yeah, she's used to having a cello that's like the size of a Volkswagen. Like you couldn't possibly misplace that thing. Your 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 ears are pretty small. Your in ears are pretty small, and you can lose them. 
just remember how much you paid for them and you're unlikely to lose them. No, but I want to go on and say this. Yeah, come on. Okay, so I need a step stool. No, we just so tip the camera down. We have the technology. What I was essentially saying was that, like, you know, like the cable, like the, the two plugs mm -hmm. that, they're, that they are, if they get bent even just a little bit, yep. And you go from putting them in, you know, whatever, however you're carrying them. If you run the risk of losing one, my my were clear, so mm. they didn't have like you know something bright for me to look for. It's expensive to replace. You have to get the gook. Like I yep. mean, they do a mold, but yeah. it's just a lot. That's why it's a lot. Like come come in here, come in here, talk with me. Okay, now let's talk. All yes. right. Um, no, let's do this. The reason why I have a cello that's not as expensive as maybe I could afford is because I don't like having the stress of somebody walking past my cello and me being like, hey, so back it up, back it up. Fair or enough. if something happens to it, you know, I just don't like that stress factor. And the options that you were talking about with in-ears that are a lot more affordable, I think, for, for like me not working with Cirque anymore, I would definitely get something that, that is durable that has the, that where I can, for me, singing and also the cello sounds like cello, the voice sounds like voice and I can nuance them both mm -hmm. without having the volume up so high. That's all I need. And I won't be mad if something happens to them, I can replace them without cussing. Okay, that's all I wanna say, bye. So many things to think about. Um, yeah, you keep, I actually own, Jeremy, I actually own, um, I own two sets of custom molded in-ears because and and then because mine have the removable cables i own two or three sets of cables um i'm just i'm one of those guys that i if i need something to make a living i'm gonna have at least two of them that's why i got two vipers um i've got two hela i've got two in-ears i've got two wireless units i've got two of all that stuff and it gets expensive to do it but if you're really making your living by doing this yeah uh I want, I want to always have it. Um, yeah, stereo is is uh, is a very different thing too, and that's a thing to think about. These are, these are mono. These are mono. So, that's what's going on there. I think, I think these are mono. I may have to read up on that now that I think about it. Um, I will have to read up on that. Don't take my word for that. I could be full of mess. Um, so yeah, again, back to this thing, the transmitter and the receiver, both super light. They are uh, rechargeable, which is a great thing because it means that you're not necessarily having to keep a bunch of batteries around. The downside of that is if you forget to recharge your item, you can't just toss a new set of batteries in there. So um, you kind of, you gotta be on top of making sure you keep these things charged. Um, but that's kind of how it goes. Um, yeah, man, lots of great feedback here from people who use in-ears and they know what they're doing. This is wonderful. So anybody who is for the first time sort of thinking about in-ears, uh, you can read the comments section and get some great advice from these people. Yeah, that's great advice. Don't rosin your in-ears. Um, I actually did find, and this was because, you know, these are the sorts of things you think about when you're on the road late at night, um, would sort of find sometimes that I, my in-ears weren't sealing great because one of the things they tell you, if you're a singer, which I am, when you're getting your molds made, you want to open your mouth. Uh, so as you're getting your molds made, you're sitting there going, feel like a goldfish. So you're doing that. The problem is when you open your, your mouth, it shrinks the size of the hole in your ear. So when your mouth is closed, your in-ears are actually just a hair loose. And that would make me crazy because now I'm hearing all this bleed sneaking in from outside. And they weren't, uh, they weren't sealing off good. Uh, th this was my first pair of in-ears. Um, so I was like, well, why not? Like put a little drop of baby oil on that thing and it's going to help things seal up because I notice as I'm running around on stage and I start sweating that sweat would run down into my ears and all of a sudden they would seal up real good and that sweat would get in there and form a liquid seal and all of a sudden oh my goodness everything sounds better so half the reason I'm like running around like an idiot trying to get sweaty so I can hear which doesn't make any sense at all if you're not an in-ear person um, but I was like well why not just put a little drop of baby oil on there and hey look at there that works pretty good um, so life hack, um, 
rosin would not suit that purpose. So um, we're being really ridiculous today, but I hope you guys are having fun. Um, that is all I had to talk about today was was this WIEMS and it's wireless in-ear monitor systems that's why they call it a weems it's I didn't name it I just tell you what it's named um but that's why it's called that that's how you can remember wireless in-ear monitor system weems Pow. um I don't think they're up on our website yet maybe are they on our website yet Shana soon they will be up there soonly and uh and then you can buy them and then you can explore a whole new world of in-ear monitors and it's uh it's really 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 nice so um it's definitely a game changer you will find for the first time yeah when you put your in-ears in for the first time you're going to feel lonely and feel like oh my goodness this is it's too dry it's too tracky it's too just oh my goodness generally people's first reaction is i don't like this um it's just like smoking <laughs> You got to smoke a whole pack of them before they feel no. good. That's terrible no. advice. Don't do that. No. So, um, no, it is. It's, it's a little like smoking. The first time you smoke something, your body very intelligently says, what on earth are you doing? Don't do that anymore. Uh, but if you're dumb enough, you can push through and you can get to the point where you're addicted. I don't know why, why I said that. Um, but in-ears are like that. Really, the first couple times you use them, you're probably not going to like them. But <clears throat> just push through. You will get used to them, and you'll get used to what they sound like and feel like. And then after about a month of doing this every night, you're going to be like, how on earth did I live without these things? This is so much better than a, than a, than a monitor blasting at me. And, um, and at the end of the night, you don't get in your car to drive home with your ears ringing. And when you listen to the playback tape, you go, wow, I'm actually in tune and I'm in time and we sound good. You can, you can definitely tell um, in the band that I was playing with before, we, we, um, when I first joined the band many, many, many years ago, uh, we were using wedges and we switched to in-ears very shortly after I joined the band. And you could listen to tape from when we were on wedges and tape from when we were on ears like a month apart and the vocal harmonies were a hundred times better like you you listen to the tape and you go oh my goodness we are so much better when we're wearing in-ears than we were when we were using wedges your your ability to sing and play in tune is going to increase dramatically um so, and you can be a good citizen. You don't have to, you don't have to enter into the stereo wars where, you, you know, you're cranking yours up to hear it over the bass player's monitor because he's deaf. And, you know, each person can have their monitor at a level that's comfortable for them and it doesn't affect anybody else in the room. So, that's muy fino. I like that. So, all right. Well, that's all I got, guys. Um, hope you have a fantastic week. Um, check out my new single. I'll do shameless self-promotion. You can find it on, on my Facebook, Matt Bell Violinist, on my Instagram, on my YouTube, all that. It's a new single. It's called My Sunglasses Are Cooler Than Yours because they are. All right? I will see you guys next week. Be good. <laughs>